so I'm sure you've seen that like everybody and their mama <laughs> is switching to DaVinci Resolve over like Final Cut Pro, Premiere Pro, etc. And curiosity killed the cat because I've got to figure out if it's like worth the switch, if it's something that's like I shouldn't matter, I shouldn't care about, and all the things. And to be honest, one of the main reasons that I want to like check it out and possibly switch is because you can use it on an iPad now. And it's like the only one of these programs you can use on an iPad. So I downloaded it and we're gonna we're we're gonna learn this together and see if it's like worth the switch. See, I don't know, I guess my first reactions, all the things. And we'll try and learn DaVinci Resolve at its most basic level, obviously, pretty quickly. So I film all my videos in S log three. So I will have to color correct, I'll have to apply LUTs. Obviously I'll have to like edit as a whole. Um, so this may be interesting. I downloaded DaVinci Resolve 18.1 and I did the free version. Um, I may need to upgrade to the, the better version or like the paid version to actually see what needs to go on, but I don't know yet. So we're just gonna figure this out. Initial thought, it kind of looks like Final Cut Pro. So I'm actually gonna edit this video about um, switching from PC to Mac here. So let's try and drag that over. Different frame rate. Yes, change the frame rate. Okay, there's a media pool, a sync bin, a transitions, titles, and effects. I feel like once you know one editing software, it's not that hard to switch to another, but I think this one works on like a, it's not, I think I'm gonna have a hard time with like the color correction and stuff. Like it works on like a node basis. I don't know. Why did it skip the whole first minute of the timeline? I don't understand why it's like starting at one minute. All right, we're off to Google. DaVinci. Resolve starting timeline at one minute. Oh, it's an hour. Okay, you can change that. Preferences, new timeline settings, start time code field. Okay, preferences, it said user, editing, timeline, and start it at zero. Save. Okay, it didn't actually fix this one, but like, I think it's fine. <laughs> I don't know what I just did. <laughs> okay, let's see. I mean, I'm getting there, I think. Okay, so I've got the volume turned up. I need to make it to where I have LUTs in here because that's how I need to color correct. LUTs in DaVinci Resolve. By the way, if you ever wanna learn a software of any kind, like just go use it like you normally would use something and then Google as you go. Like that Google as you go is my best way to learn something because like you're just like, oh, okay, how do I, I mean, you could, you could get on a software and be like, I don't even know how to open something. And then you can be like, okay, I'm gonna Google it as I go. How do I open it? How do I do this? How do I do that? And then that way you learn it in order and it, it for some reason like sticks better up here, I think. Okay. so. DaVinci Resolve preferences, general LUT locations. Like put all my LUTs in one folder, which I don't think I have right yet. Let's see. I think those are the two that I use the most anyway. So I'm just gonna put them there. I think I just moved them out of where they should have been for my editor. Hold on. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, I totally did. Okay, so let's copy them. I think color correction is where DaVinci Resolve like really shines um, and has like more options and stuff than other things. But I'll be honest, I don't, color correction is not like an expertise of mine, um, but maybe I'll get better if I use this. So how do I get a, how do I get a LUT? <laughs> okay, let's see. Open the LUTs browser. Hold on. Okay, so I have a node and then I need to open LUTs. Okay, okay. Gamut, do I drag it over? Just double click it and it like applies it. Okay, cool. All right, now I need to like color correct this. So I guess I need another node. Color, nodes, add a serial node. And now I need to like adjust the lightness and 
and it's a little bit green and stuff. Okay, hold on. That's something I do a lot in Final Cut Pro is I like, I look at it and then I need to like disable it to like make sure that I'm looking at it right. Control D, Command D. Okay, let's try it. Command D. Oh, it does disable it. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. I feel like we're doing good here. Like my color corrections are looking great. Let's add another node. I feel like this will probably be the hardest part. Add another serial node. And then on this one, we're going to apply another LUT that is going to be the one that I like the most, which is, it's called copper. Now, how do I change the like severity of the LUT? See again, Google as you go. Okay. Change how much of a LUT. Okay. It's, to, it's used in DaVinci Resolve. Okay. So color correcting in my like normal way that I color correct was really easy. Like, I mean, I had to Google as I went, but like, I understand how it works. Like the nodes are basically like layers or steps in Final Cut Pro. Um, so now let's figure out how to edit this thing. My mouse is not working right either, by the way, guys. And so that's fun. I'm going to turn it off and back on. Okay. Do they not? I don't think they have it. Interesting. I don't love that. I got really used to the magnetic clips in Final Cut Pro, so I'll have to figure that out. Okay, let's look up some keyboard shortcuts. DaVinci Resolve keyboard shortcuts. Command X. I just did that though. Hold on. No, I don't think that means like the timeline. Um, editing. All right, trim blade is just B. Okay, so honestly, the like cutting part is pretty easy. Um, I don't love that it doesn't snap back together, but you can just like delete that, which is what you do in Premiere Pro too. So like not, not that crazy. Um, yeah, let's see if I can get this done. It is 11, 12 right now. Let's see how long it takes me to edit, like, and get all the stuff cut out that I want cut out. Okay, so it's been, I, th I think when I left off, I said it was 1120 something. It's 1150 and I am six minutes and 10 seconds into this video, into like cutting the timeline, but I've learned how to insert text, how to take out the green screen of something and like insert a thing. Uh, I've learned how to insert images, sound, copy, nodes like so the color correction can go from one clip to another because I my camera died so I had like multiple like I'm learning y'all I'm learning two hours later okay it is like two hours later it is 1 12 <laughs> um but I'm done like totally done the video is currently rendering I added in text screen recordings images green screen things sound effects, LUTs, like everything. I exported my thumbnails from my thumbnail video, uh, did everything like I would do in Final Cut Pro. And yes, it took me longer, but like literally my first time using this program and I liked it. It's, it's not bad. It's not like, of course there's some things where I'm like, uh, I don't know if that is easier than Final Cut Pro or not. Um, and I don't love that there's not a magnetic timeline because I really do like that in Final Cut Pro. It makes editing like really fast. You like one click and they snap back together. And maybe I can figure out how to do that, but I couldn't today. But there were some things that I really liked better. Like when I'm grabbing still shots for my thumbnails, that process was actually easier once I figured it out in DaVinci Resolve, especially to like grab them all and then export them all at the same time instead of having to like wait. Color correcting did not slow the program down. Color correcting massively slows Final Cut Pro down. 
not necessarily color correcting as a whole, but color correcting, like adding a LUT on top of footage while you're editing, that slows it down. And it did not slow it down at all in DaVinci. So overall, it's a pretty cool program. And I can see like the color correction section. <laughs> I'm a poet and didn't know it. The color correction section is way more robust than a lot of other programs. So I can see why like super professional editors want to use this because they have way more options and they're, they make that like cool thing where you can like, it's like a, it's like a box that's made for DaVinci Resolve for you to like edit colors like that way. I can see that being useful too. Um, but overall, I don't feel like it does anything different than Final Cut Pro. Um, obviously I'm still faster in Final Cut Pro. And as far as like most of the stuff, it's, it's pretty equal. Like I say, there were a few things in Final Cut Pro I like better, a few things in this I like better. Um, and I'm currently rendering and exporting the video. And I feel like that the time frame is very similar too. Remember I'm on like an M1 Max Pro MacBook. So, you know, that can be like, it, it's pretty fast anyway. But I do really like a lot of the color grading features, which I think is the main thing in DaVinci Resolve. So I don't know if I'll give up Final Cut Pro, but I'm really excited to keep playing with DaVinci and see if it's something that like maybe comes easier. If you're like a beginner editor, I don't think DaVinci Resolve is for you just because there are like a lot of features. And if you are super overwhelmed by tech when there's like a lot of things going on, that may not be for you. But if you are someone who has played around with, you know, Premiere Pro or Final Cut and you want something more robust, this might be an option for you. But overall, I totally see why people switch to it. I really do. Like I say, don't know if I will make the switch or not, but I loved it just now.